Okay, let's uh, continue with some examples. You know what, uh, between videos, I was looking around, I was wondering what is making this bizarre shadow? I'm looking up kind of, you know, at, I'm on my porch patio here. I'm like, I don't see that shape anywhere. I don't know what, it's the projector. It's, it's actually the wire, um, not my projector, on uh, my document cam, excuse me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like a, a big faux pas, right, when you're filming, is that you don't um, get the camera or any part of the production crew in the shot, right, or the shadows or something like that. Actually, I just kind of, just sort of moved it onto the side. I didn't even realize. I looked back at the screen and some of that shadow is gone. Okay, well, that's a little bit better. Here we go. Here's a more typical style. This is the way the book will present a lot of your homework. Um, we'll say show that the function y is the general solution to the differential equation. So um, I wrote it the same way the book will, so you, you're you not surprised. They give you the differential equation second and the solution first. So this function solves this differential equation. Uh, all right, and you can see all that there. All right, so what we're gonna do to show this, to like verify, that this really is the solution to that differential equation. Well, it's the same idea that we just saw. Um, I'm gonna take the derivative, and I'm gonna figure out what y prime is. I'm gonna plug in y prime, and I'm gonna plug in the original there, and I'm just gonna show, yep, gives a true statement. So it's probably helpful uh, to rewrite y this way before I take a derivative. C quantity at x plus one to the negative first. So then my derivative is a little bit cleaner, a little bit neater. Negative C, x plus one to the negative two. Uh, but when I plug in, I find it's easier to then go back and rewrite them as the fractions. So there I've got, I've got y, I've got y prime. I'm gonna plug those back in. And again, all I'm doing is confirming that this really does work out. So I plug in y prime, I plug in y. Hey, is this really gonna equal this? Oh, well, sure, right? Because one of those cancels out here. One of the x plus ones cancels and, and yep, those are equal. So I showed it, that's all I'm gonna do. Check mark. Okay, very nice. Uh, let's see, I mentioned earlier um, that sometimes a solution looks like an implicit derivative. So we definitely want to do one of those because it, it feels a lot different. Um, use implicit differentiation to show y satisfies the differential equation. Okay, so here's the differential equation and we saw this one earlier. Uh, and then on the left, instead of a function y, it's an entire implicit equation. Uh, here it's y plus x to the third, y to the third minus 2x equals c. It turns out this whole thing is the solution to that differential equation. Like, oh my goodness, wow. Okay, so um, here's the idea, and they, they really kind of, they tell you exactly what to do. So we're going to, again, start with this. But instead of finding y prime, you know, it's like we got, we can't solve for y here. Um, we're just gonna take the derivative implicitly and we're not gonna plug anything in. Once we have the implicit derivative, we're just gonna, you know, work with that until it looks exactly like this and, and that's what it will be. So here's how it plays out. Yeah, okay, I'm telling you, that's the solution. What a weird, okay, yeah. Um, oh, and then I'm, I'm really just describing here exactly what I did in words. Uh, well, that's nice. Take the implicit derivative, then rewrite it to look like this. Hey, it never hurt to hear the instructions twice. Okay, I'm gonna continue that on the next page. So, let's kinda like do this sort of thing. We'll continue if we can fit it all. Yeah, that'll work well enough, I think. Um, so you may want to um, just verify on your own 
this implicit differentiation. Um, I got it to be that guy, but maybe we can walk through it. So if we start with y, right, the derivative of y, we're just going to say is y prime. x to the third, y to the third, well, we've got a product rule. So that's going to be 3x squared times y to the third plus x to the third times 3y squared y prime for the implicit. And the derivative of minus 2x minus 2. Finally, on the right side, the derivative of c, since c is an arbitrary constant, will be 0. So we've got our implicit derivative. Um, and really, at this point, we've, we've done the hard work. Now it's just a matter of rearranging all of this stuff so that it looks exactly like that. And we have to get it exactly if we are going to claim that we've verified this. So you might see what to do. Um, the terms on the right, we've got the 2 and the 3x squared y to the third. Hey, I can add the 2 over here. I can subtract this over there, and I'll have that right side. Okay. And that leaves me with uh, the two parts that involve y prime. Okay, I move those over. Let's get rid of that now. Okay, and well, how am I going to finish this off? Well, all I got to do is factor that y prime. And now it looks exactly like the differential equation. So at that point, I have verified it. And there you go. OK, so um, at this point, I'll tell you, um, usually we like solutions to differential equations to be functions, like those first two examples. But sometimes it's really just not possible. Um, and you know where where this whole thing began that equation at the beginning um, there was no way we were going to be able to write that as a y equals right as a function so sometimes you, you know the best you can do is an implicit solution and so hey we'll take it if that's the best we can do we'll take it what generally people much prefer an explicit solution we say when it's just a y equals it's a function Okay, well, on that note, um, let's continue by defining the different, uh, a couple different terms here. So we've seen these things. Now let's give some, some uh, clear language to them. Uh, so the two different types of solutions, uh, when it's a function, we'll call that an explicit solution. Um, put simply, when it's solved for y, so we saw that in that very first example. Uh, y equals cx to the third, that was an explicit solution. Oh, also the second example we did, that was an explicit solution, it solved for y. Versus the example we just did was an implicit solution. Right? It was this whole equation when it's not solved for y. Um, but yeah, it's like, hey, try to solve that for y. No, no, thank you. I got a y, a y cubed, try to isolate. No, 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 I don't want to do that. Sometimes it's the best we can do. Okay, but it goes on. Hey, we saw this one already, a general solution. Let's give that a definition. Um, the, what, um, make something a general solution is when it contains that arbitrary constant because the generalness is like hey you can pick whatever you want for C um, and it turns out there will be infinitely many solutions because you can put infinitely many real numbers in for C which is kind of cool um, sometimes you'll hear the phrase family of solutions you know, every different value of C is a is a different member of the family, but general solution is nice too. Okay, compare general solution to particular solution. A particular solution, uh, it does not contain C. Uh, maybe, so that's kind of like a clear visual that you've got a particular solution when you don't have the arbitrary C. 
um, now that I'm looking at this, I, I kind of want to like rewrite this definition to say it's not so much that it doesn't contain C um, so much as C takes a particular value. I think that's a better way to say it. Um, so we're going to end up assigning C to a particular value and putting that into the equation. Um, actually, might as well give you some examples. So, you know, when we saw, right, y, right a moment ago, um, we had a general solution y equals cx to the third. Well, a particular solution would have been y equals 2x to the third. All right, when we assign that c a particular value, um, another one, you know, you know, we saw this even before that, right, where C was 1. Okay, okay so the idea is we'll, we'll actually end up determining the particular C value. It's not even that. We'll, we'll just pick one ourselves. Um, we'll end up figuring out what particular C value we should put in for the situation. Let's see an example of that just to close up this section. Um, show you what we're looking at here. Uh, so it says use the general solution. Here's the general solution right there. Use the general solution to find a particular solution that satisfies the given initial condition. Okay, so I'm trying to present it in a similar way to how you'll see it in the homework. So they're going to give you the general solution. There it has the C, right? So you can see down. They'll give you the differential equation. But now there's this third part, uh, the given initial condition. So we happen to know that y of 0 equals 2. Um, there's our initial condition. Uh, so when x is 0, y equals 2 is the idea. Um, so the, in this particular problem, the way I've shown it, we're not going to verify that this general solution solves this differential equation, although in the homework, usually it's multiple parts. So they'll say, hey, um, verify that your solution does in fact solve the differential equation and then find a particular solution that meets your initial condition, right? We're gonna skip the verifying just because we've seen that now a couple times. But what would you do if we had to, right? Take the derivative y prime, plug in y prime, plug in the original, and it should work out to be a true statement. Uh, maybe you wanna try that out on your own. I'm just gonna do this new part. I'm going to find the particular solution um, that um, for this initial condition. So the idea is there's one value of C that will make this true. So this is an entire family, if you will. One value of C will cause Y of 0 to equal 2. And we got to go and find it. Okay, so here's, let's go for it. Um, oh, looks like I'm, I've written that now twice. Yep, that's the initial condition. When X equals 0, Y equals 2. Uh, find the value of C that will cause that to occur. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to our general solution. We're going to plug in 2 for Y. We're going to plug in 0 for X, 2, 0. And we're going to solve for C. Well, OK, E to the 0 is 1. So this is pretty quick. Uh, doesn't take a whole lot to solve for C. Here C equals negative 2. But at that point, hey, we have the value of C, but we're not done. We don't have the particular solution yet. Don't forget to plug that value of C back in. There's the particular solution. 
So I take my negative two, put it back into the general, and I'll get y equals four minus two e to the negative x. So I found the one value of c that causes my initial condition to be true. Put that back in. Now I have the one member of the family, if you will, that meets my criteria that at x equals zero, y equals two. Um, it's kind of fun to graph this sort of thing. If we were in class, you know, I uh, it's possible in Desmos to graph with an arbitrary constant. If you type in uh, a C, then it will, uh, well, there's this kind of feature where it, it anyway, all right, I, it's hard to describe, but it will um, show you how the curve shifts for various values of C and it's kind of moving and you can see it, um, you know, across this like small range of values of C. And then you can plot this one on its own, this, this still curve. Um, and you can see kind of where it is in the family and, and how it's related to when it's, when there are other values of C. Um, man, I would, that'd be fun to do in class. But anyway, I uh, invite you to do that if you want. Of course, the point is here, this is the one member of the family. Um, that is the end of 9.1. So we're going to start solving in 9.2. See you there.